Tournament of the Year. DreamHack Atlanta. While DreamHack Sweden was hindered by the lack of time between announcement and the tournament itself, Atlanta was the one that every team was ready for. With almost every single mo- that a moja? With every single major North American team and a handful of top EU teams, it turned into a real spectacle. Said to destroy continued to be one of the most dangerous teams out there, as long as they are playing off stream, and we were given a glimpse of Rocket League's future with a grand final between the Muffin Men and GFE. Also, they had lights. Sick. RLCS Season 4. I'm only going to allow myself to select one of the two RLCS seasons we've had this year, and between the two, Season 4 had the most going for it. With RLCS newcomers PSG and Cloud9 shaking up their regions, it honestly felt like we were watching a whole new game. The backboard plays that we got so used to in Season 3 were almost completely gone with the team still trying it, trounced at every single moment that they tried, and we were also treated some of the most intense matches we've seen so far in Rocket League. Then came the LAN. Oh, then came the LAN. Ten games went to their tie-breaking game, which almost equaled all the previous seasons put together. And then we were treated to great match after great match, from Chiefs proving that they were here to stay and not just a fluke win against Denial last season, all the way up to a ludicrous day three that was unfortunately topped by a deflating grand finals between Method and GFE. Although ignoring that, season four proved that whatever we thought about competitive Rocket League, we were only scratching the surface. The World Cup. Well, this certainly adds some variety to this. Forget best of sevens or team legacy. This was all about international teams battling it out in best of ones. No, not 10 minute best of ones. No, not 20 minute best of ones. You're all regular five minute long best of ones, which some people had interesting reactions to. Coupled together with stellar editing work by League of Rockets, and you were gifted to one of the most feel-good tournaments we had this year, with everyone pulling for their region. Best of One also worked well at making everyone just feel so precarious about their favorite team winning the whole thing. Sure, we had favorites going in, but at Best of One, anything could go wrong. And nothing shocked the senses more than Scotland crashing out of the group stage to really hammer home just how hard it was gonna be to win. Well, for most teams anyway. Despite the great Cinderella tales such as Brazil's surprise run through the bracket, it was the USA who crushed everybody on their way to World Cup glory. Ah, if only that translated to the real world. Rocket League Esports has arrived! Rocket has arrived! Okay, now we can say it properly. Look, it's all well and good from within our little bubble of a community to keep saying that Rocket League Esports is real. It's another thing entirely when a major org like E-League announces a major prize pool for a tournament featuring our game. And what a tournament it was. Taking a more traditional sports format of two groups followed by a knockout stage, we were met with incredible production values, stellar casting, and a grand final for the ages between two teams that had already met in the real group of death. Every match felt important, and it was produced so well to include information not only for veterans of the scene, but new viewers as well, who were just seeing Rocket League for the first time. All in all, when you look at it, and especially when you consider just how well Rocket League has done, not only on Twitch, but ratings-wise on TV, E-League was a success on every single level. Major shout-outs need to go out as well to the Collegiate League, Major League Doubles, and the Gfinity Elite Series that have all done incredible work in their own right. But these were the premier tournaments of the year, as well as a little bit of spice added in by the World Cup. 
So when it comes down to this, am I asking for the best tournament or am I asking for the one that did the most? I'm asking for the one that did the most for this scene. So, E-League is my winner for this year. It was very close for me, picking between the Season 4 of RLCS and E-League, but for me... Season 4 of RLCS proved something that I never thought would be true, and that is that you can have too much of a good thing. By the time we got to the end of the tournament, nobody really had the energy to go any further, not to mention the poor boys on stage who were just not there anymore. It just wasn't as grandiose as it needed to be. However, in terms of the way the tournament was put together, E-League was everything. I want to see from future Rocket League tournaments. It kept itself short, it kept every single match being what made worthwhile, and so for the future of Rocket League tournaments, I hope that we look towards E-League as the way to go in the future. So they will be named this year's Tournament of the Year. The Unsung Hero Award for 2017. This is the award that we are going to be handing out to people that were less known and less put forward as reasons why this community works as well as it does. Now, me putting out the nominations thing was a little bit of a, a little bit of a play right there because if someone was to get too many nominations from that, then they're not necessarily unsung, are they? So I've gone out my way to try and find some people who I feel like deserve a little bit more of a shout. So who will win the Unsung Hero Award of 2017? Furtive Raccoon. You know when you just feel genuinely pleased for someone? Me neither. But when Furtive Raccoon announced that he was going to be joining Smash.gg, I genuinely was overjoyed for him. One of the integral parts of Gold Rush going ahead, as well as many other tournaments, Furtive not only did an incredible job behind the scenes of these tournaments, ensuring that events went off without a hitch, but has also had to put up with people like James Bot and Quinn Lobdell. You poor bastard. That is the reason why this year I want to acknowledge Furtive Raccoon as my representative for all tournament organizers out there, no matter what the org. We don't do this scene without ya. Kim Meltzer. Never heard this name before? I highly doubt you have. Following the trend of backstage maestros, Kim Meltzer is in charge of Twitch's hospitality for every RLCS event I have been a part of. And to say her and her team do a good job would be a massive disservice. For many of the pro players, RLCS lands are the very first opportunities they have to leave home and play Rocket League for a living. It's her job to not only make sure that they are safe throughout the event, but also fed, in the right place, flights booked, hotel is correct, everyone has the right room, getting people to the venue, getting people out of the venue, oh hey, that guy needs a thing, okay, well Kim will go out of her way to ensure it's sorted. So this nomination isn't just for her, but the entire Twitch travel and hospitality team. Slock. Do you like stats? Well, if you're part of a broadcast, then you do. And Slock is the one that provides them instantly. And it's not just a base level either. You honestly have no idea how many times I have had a hunch about something, watching some tournament footage, and then being able to go to Slock's website and confirm my theories. And now he's recently released Octane.gg, a new stats and info site all rolled into one. And it's glorious. Even now, it seems his work won't stop getting better. Even though he's one of the most recognizable names on this list, Slock more than deserves his nod as Unsung Hero of the Year. Vile Broker. Damn, Doomsie did a great job with those after movies, and I'm not trying to take any credit away from him, but damn, did Vile Breaker do a great job getting a lot of those shots that were used for them, especially back in Season 3. These after movies are a highlight of the scene, and Vile's hand in their production should not be overlooked, getting so many shots that I wasn't even aware he was there for. Between the two of them, it's almost as if they have eyes on every square inch of these venues, and manage to pick up every important moment, making Twitch's decision to pick them up to create a season 4 after movie one of their better ones. Now, when it comes to this category, the main thing is bringing attention to the people that do so much work in our community for so little credit. So, handing out the award is 
almost a formality, if anything else. So I'm going to go with the person that I believe doesn't get any attention at all, despite the amount of work that she and the rest of her crew do. So for this year, the Unsung Hero Award goes to Kim Meltzer and the Twitch Hospitality Team. Everyone on this list is very worthy of winning this award. However, not once did I see any mention of the Twitch hospitality team, and I understand completely why. But therefore, it is my duty to shine a light on them. So Kim, this reward is for you. Personality of the Year. Nomination number one, Rizzo. He did a little dance, and people made a goal explosion out of it. If that doesn't tell you how popular Rizzo is, you're not paying attention, or you're just turning your eyes away from it. When it comes to being a pro player, Rizzo has the full package. A very good player with great social media interaction, and he handles a microphone better than he handles someone dribbling at him. When he originally made the move over to G2, I was convinced that he would become the most popular player we have in the game. And the amount of nominations he received for this award proves this theory to be true. With strong recent tournament showings as well, only helping his cause, Rizzo's 2018 looks to be just as incredible as his 2017. Nomination number two, Doomsy. The first season of the Gfinity Elite series was all about one man. With fans writing his name on whiteboards and often being the focus of many post-game interviews, Doomsy embraced his role as the face of the Rocket League series with gusto. Whenever I get asked which players I think will do very well on a broadcasting job, Doomsy is one of the names I bring right up there. An opinion that I hold even stronger after he was brought on as a guest analyst for the Season 2 Grand Finals. And while he still has the drive to become a force in the competitive scene, there's no doubt Doomsy's personality will keep him around for a long time. Kronovi. Cole was right, it's almost nostalgic that Kronovi is good again. And it just makes the world feel right. With G2's rise to becoming a premier team once again, Kronovi has been thrust back into the spotlight, and he hasn't missed a step, knowing exactly what to say and how to phrase it. Long gone are the days where Crow was struggling with his newfound fame in the opening months of Rocket League's release, and instead he has had time to develop and create a great storyline around his return to top form. Crow, it's great to have you back on the big stage. Turbo Pulsar Turbo is brilliant. He speaks his mind and wasn't afraid to become the bad guy at the most recent RLCS finals, although nothing he said was actually wrong. Despite this, it's incredibly hard to root against the guy. Always smiling and enjoying the events, but also has a competitive drive that allowed him to burst to the forefront of Rocket League Esports. Although his Twitter game needs work, we get it, you're garbage at this game, Turbo has become the mouthpiece for one of Europe's most popular teams. Long gone are the days where pro players would stand on the stage and simply not know what to say, whilst just mumbling away into the microphone. Now players are starting to realize that it's not just about being able to play well, but there's a lot to go along with it. And these are the players that know how to be what people want them to be. The fans want to see them be interesting. And one of these players simply just does it that little bit better. Rizzo, you win. Hey, did I receive some nominations for Rizzo in this category? Yeah. Yeah, I did, and there was a lot of them. However, it is hard for me to disagree. Everybody on this list seems to completely understand that when you play, you are going to events. People at those events want to come and speak to you. Having that side of you that can be approachable, knowledgeable at the game, and also convey that into words is so, so important. And Rizzo, for me, is the person that is currently doing it the best. Gale Force Esports vs Muffin Men After failing to make it to RLCS Season 3 despite being number one seeds in the qualifier, Muffin Men went into DreamHack Atlanta with everything to prove. Another poor result would surely mean that things would have to change. 
Instead, they blitz everyone and took on EU's new powerhouse trio in Gale Force Esports, a team just coming off a second place loss to Flipside Tactics over in Sweden. What resulted was a match so damn good that people were stealing chairs from other areas of the DreamHack venue just to use as they watched this cross-continental showdown. In Game 7, which is a trend that you're going to be seeing a lot on this list, the series was decided by an own goal by Kadop that he could do absolutely nothing about. And at the time, we didn't know it yet, but this match also signified the beginning of what was going to be the changing of the guard in both NA and EU competitive scenes. With Muffin Men being picked up by C9 shortly after this win, and going on to dominate North America, and GFE going on to dominate, well, the world. The Grand Finals of E-League certainly didn't start like your typical match of the year contender, with both teams taking lopsided victories that led to the series score being close and pretty much nothing else. But finally, after both teams had obliterated each other twice, effectively turning this into a best of three, things started to heat up. Gale Force went into full mole mode, snatching Game 5 and the first goal in Game 6. G2 responded by strapping a sledgehammer to Rizzo's car, and after a 2 minute 40 second overtime, JNAPS finally completed his transaction to support the level 3 backpack kickstarter, no this is not an ad, and burst into action with the winning goal to send them to game 7, which G2 won after a miraculous save from their talisman. G2's win here was the culmination of an incredibly long journey. From missing out on even qualifying for RLCS back in Season 2, they continued to steadily improve, dropping to denial in Season 3 before roaring back to a 4th place finish at the MGM. This was a much deserved end to an incredible year of Rocket League. Gale Force Esports vs Method I said it immediately after the match and I'll say it again now. This was the best match I have ever had the opportunity to commentate. Having successfully traversed the winner's bracket, these two European titans came to clash in one of the closest series we have ever seen. Here's a tip for you, if you ever see GFE and Method playing against each other, you're gonna be having a good time. They played a ridiculous amount of overtime and in the end it only came down to Turbo Pulsar going into a full blood rage for GFE to smash their European rivals down to the lower bracket. These teams would meet again in the Grand Finals, but an exhausted method couldn't hold up to the laser-focused GFE, who went on to win the RLCS Season 4 Championship. Flipside Tactics vs Resonant When it comes to award shows, it's very easy for the most recent events to stick out more than the things that happened earlier this year. But Resonant vs Flipside was important both at the time and six months later. In the build to Season 3, Resonant, who were Team Secrecy at the time, had been dismantling Flipside in weekly Gfinity tournaments. And with a 3 game to 1 lead in a match that would decide who would go to the World Championships, it looked like it would be happening again. Then experience came to play. It's all good to beat Flipside in a weekly tournament, but with so much on the line and a goal in hand, Resonant began to crack, allowing Flipside too much space to play, which the World Champions happily took advantage of. Resonant dropped six unanswered goals before finally waking up and clashing in one of the finest individual games of Rocket League ever played. In the end, it was King Clutch himself, Cooksear97, who proved to be the difference maker. Six months later, and this game still stands out. Flipside find themselves rebuilding after a subpar season four, and the lessons learned by the team now known as Method won't be forgotten anytime soon. Okay, please do not envy me in this position. Every single one of these games was ludicrous to watch. And for me, there is very little separating them. But unlike those average TV show hosts that you're going to see, I'm not going to say it's impossible. Because guess what? It's not. There is a best game of the year. And that game was quite simply GFE versus Method. Look, I really had a long time where I was not going to put this as number one, but I sat myself down, rewatched every single series I have on this list, and 
asked myself, which one did I enjoy watching the most? And it was Method versus GFE. Simply put, every single time those two teams play against each other, it is magical. It is the best Rocket League you can see. So if you do ever see GFE versus Method happening again, stop what you're doing, put everything down, and make sure you are watching because they produce fireworks. Player of the Year I made no secret that I believe Fairy Peak had one of the weakest performances in Season 3 League play. So bad that I thought he would struggle to recover and find his feet in the standard start of game. After spending so much of the earlier year destroying two's tournaments, it looked like he wasn't going to be able to progress in his career. So for him to make this list can only go on to show just how well he turned his year around. It just seemed like the moment he stepped in Los Angeles, he was still the quiet, reserved Frenchman we knew he was, but once he stepped on the Rocket League pitch, we all knew something had changed. Becoming a key component in Mocket's impressive second place run, he didn't let up after that. Over the course of Season 4, his in-game IQ seemed to have progressed a couple of years in only a few months. He was always a mechanical genius, but often found himself out of position and nowhere near close enough to an area where he could show off his skills. But not anymore. Fairy Peak progressed from a player that has a magical touch to a player that can now get magical touches. Squishy Muffins. He can do donuts with a Batmobile while keeping the ball on his roof. While I am still a massive fan of Gimmick and Tormund's current role doesn't really allow him to receive any plaudits, something I'm not exactly helping fix right now, Squishy is the most influential player on C9. When it comes to big stages, he knows how to perform with only a few missteps throughout the year. His cool head has led to C9 going from underachievers to world beaters in a very short amount of time. Also, he became the first player to win an IRCS game in the Proteus. It's not much of one, but a record's a record. JNAPS The G2 Talisman dominates the stats board almost as much as he dominates games. The player that popularized ball carrying became the core of G2's growth throughout 2017. Without him, the team would have simply fallen apart a very long time ago. Give him 100 boosts in the ball and watch him produce something spectacular. And this was never more apparent than at E-League. With Kronovi taking more of a backseat role, JNAPS was able to produce not one of, but the finest individual performance I've ever witnessed. And now that G2 has everything figured out and seemingly caught lightning in a bottle, they'll need to continue to support JNAPS as NA's talent pool continues to grow, especially as they now aim to take over their region. KDOP I kept you waiting for this one, didn't I? KDOP will be the only representative from Gale Force because if I don't limit them, they're going to dominate this category much like Match of the Year. So why him over Turbo? Yes, Turbo has the title of the two-time, but if that's as far as you're looking, then this would be a very shallow award to hand out, especially if we were to separate them using just one game, no matter how important that game was. While I agree that there was a two-month period where Turbo was the best in the world, before him, I believed it was KDOP, and after him, I believed it was KDOP. Remember Fairy's poor streak in Season 3 that I was just talking about? Sometimes it was barely even noticeable because of how good of a job KDOP was doing at writing the ship. Statistically, there is very little to separate any of these Gale Force members once they came together, so I'm simply just doing it by putting forward who I believe had the most complete year. And a great season with Mocket where he was pulling the lion's share of the work, victories in both Season 4 and the Universal Open, as well as a string of second place finishes all led to a stellar year. You can't stop KDOP and sometimes he makes you wonder why you'd even bother to try. We have had so many incredible players that I did not have the opportunity to list down here. However, we always knew that it was going to be somewhere around these players. And even further beyond that, we also knew that it was going to be one of the Gale Force members. And it is. I'm not exactly going to be pushing the boat out with this choice, but the right decision is the right decision. KDOP is the player of the year.
He does everything, okay? There is not a single flaw in his game. Almost every single player I listed here had either a good season one or a good season two. K-Dup had just a good year. There was no point that you look at him play and just go, okay, he's probably going to be the issue here because he's not. Sometimes underappreciated because of just how consistent he can be and how little you expect him to ever make mistakes. KDOP is the best player of 2017. Team of the Year Cloud9 while playing as Iris, this team looks like a lock for IRLCS Season 3, winning everything before and after the qualifier, but not the qualifier itself. What followed was Iris moving on from the Chinio and picking up Gimmick, before entering a zen-like state while everyone else played in the IRLCS, and they awaited their first major opportunity to show off what they can do. Then Atlanta happened, and ever since then, Cloud9 has been the team to beat in North America. While many broadcast talent like to refer to them as the new kings of the North, C9 have held their sights higher than that. Where they led the campaign in a summer where they proved that North America could still hold up to EU despite a couple of months and a couple of seasons of bad results, they were a joy to watch with sublime passing plays and a near impenetrable defense. That's if they even give you a chance to shoot, that is. I can guarantee you that going into 2018, the North will not be good enough, and neither should it be. Their sights will be set on conquering the world. Gale Force Esports Ever since forming, Rocket League has been Gale Force's playground. They're a team comprised of individual superstars Violent Panda, Kadop, and Turbo Pulsar to create one of the most impressive units in Rocket League, with a vast amount of tournament results ranging from first to second. A lot of seconds. Sure, they had a blip against PSG and Method, but that's all it ever turned out to be. Two losses against top teams on their peak form, which they quickly turned around to obliterate the rest of Season 4. Put simply, Gale Force doesn't have bad games. Their team comp, which requires each player to pull their own weight, simply just doesn't allow for it. So when they play, it results in either one of two scenarios. Either Gale Force crushes their opponents, who just can't keep up with their blistering speed, or the other team steps up, and we have ourselves a real match. Look, I make no attempt to hide the fact that I am a Method fanboy, and their progression to become a top team this year has been a fascinating one. After spending the first few months of the year as the team pegged to finally dethrone Flipside, their first season as a team in the RLCS was anything but smooth sailing. Despite some good results, they were knocked out by the very team that they were supposed to be the one to dethrone, and were forced into a difficult decision. Stick together, or split and look for better opportunities. They chose to stick. Sign with Method, they've had four different names this year, and participate in the Gfinity Elite Series, which turned out to be an incredible learning experience for them. They returned for a star-making Season 4 with second place finishes in the Universal Open, RLCS Regionals, as well as the World Championships themselves. Right now, the only thing holding them back is the lack of a major championship victory, but they'll know more than anyone that there is only one more step to take. Chiefs Esports Club This position could have gone to either NRG or PSG, but instead it's going to go to Chiefs, and I'll explain why. Great teams challenge great teams and make them even better, pushing the level up higher and higher while everyone else chases behind them. But Chiefs don't have that over in OCE. Sure, there's some teams that will push them, but no true rival. So that makes their 7th place finishes in two seasons of RLCS as well as E-League all the more mind-boggling. These boys are the true freaks of Rocket League. They have no right to be as good as they are, and yet they still challenge and even beat some of the best the original leagues have to offer. If we were to argue consistency, then no team has been more consistent than the Chiefs, who won both of their league play seasons. 
Quick pace, calm heads, and an ability to read almost any situation make Chiefs a fine nomination for Team of the Year. Also, I figure that if I'm really nice to OCE, they'll fly me out one day. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is the live version of Shogun finally coming through to you. Um, this has been a pain at the ass to put all of this together, but it's been good to get to the very end. And speaking of the very end, let us discuss the team of the year. Or do we really need to? There is only one team of the year for this year. It has been a 2017 that belongs to Gale Force Esports. Do, 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 Oh, God, what else am I supposed to say in this situation? Gale Force are currently the most consistent and the best Rocket League team out there. There is no arguing this fact at all. And whilst the other teams on here were opportunities to talk about other teams that we have around, that's what they are. They are other teams that we have around. They are the challengers to Gale Force's throne. It is every single time we get into a tournament, Gale Force versus who, not who's going to be taking on who. They are a certainty every single time we get into a tournament. And with that, we'll be calling the end of the Shogi Awards in 2017. It was a little bit more serious than I was expecting to take it, but there was limited time, and I've certainly learned lots of lessons heading into doing some more video journalism for the rest of the year. If you guys have any suggestions for me, I would highly like you to send them over to me on Twitter. Also, make sure you talk on Twitter right now about how incredible the Shogi Awards actually were and that they were the best thing that you've ever seen because they were. So make it sound like it was better than it was, okay? Just keep it quiet. No one needs to know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon. Also, I was kind of rendering parts of this literally just before we went live. Like this one that you're watching right now, that was rendering whilst we were talking about Tournament of the Year. I cut this close, and I didn't even sleep last night. I'm going to go get very drunk now, people. I, I love you all.